All right, I'm gonna try to continue some with the OS dev here, the 32-bit OS dev. The main topic I wanna to tackle today is probably a remove file or delete file, an RM command, if you will, adding that in, and maybe a remove directory as well, depending how far I get in an hour or two, we'll see. There's also some other helper functions and maybe bug fixes and things along the way that I wanna tackle as well. And you'll see I have some changes for Git. These aren't really code changes. It's more like I added a bunch of to-dos in the code or looked in and clarified some things and like comments a little bit. I didn't really add any code here. So that's all that these are. I think one thing I added in the kernel was when I'm initializing the file system, I'm setting up the open inode table. I was just referencing a different variable. That was, that was wrong, but that's really the only changes I did there. I just added to-do text here. So what do I want to do to start off? I want to try to make commands a little bit easier, or a little bit more flexible to work with. I know they're still mainly in here is just string constants, but I did add an array and I did add an array of functions to run the commands. I want to make these a little bit better too by stating, let's say the, the specific index for these arrays so I don't have to keep them in the same order. I don't have to remember to keep them in the same order because maybe I change this around one day and it's like this. I don't want to call the make directory command for change directory, for example. And there's ways to get around that. And one way I did that was with the system calls. So I think in the syscall numbers here. So I have an enum just with syscall numbers and I'm using that within within the system call file, I believe at the bottom, yeah, up here. So C either, I don't know, C99 or 11 or something. And that is support for this where, or a, I think this is a designated initializer kind of, but anyway, when you initialize an array, you can set numbers within brackets for the specific index that these can be at. So syscall test one over here is one. So at index array one, you can put in, you know, in this case, a function call. So you can just specify the, the arrays here. And I've done that before, but I kind of, Forgot that that was a thing that exists, and that could be used for the commands here, I think, to make them a little bit more flexible, or at least ensure they're always in the same position. So I do want to do that. And it doesn't really have to be a type def. I'll just start with the regular enum here, unless I want to limit the number of commands later. Well, I guess I could do that. If there's a situation where we want to pass commands to a function or something, and we want it to be limited, hopefully, to only the things within the enum, I guess I can type def it here. We'll just call it shell commands. Although these are technically constants, they're all ints. I guess they might not be constants, but we'll just say make directory. I'm not gonna set a specific number. It'll just be whatever they happen to be here. So in the commands and the functions arrays, we'll say make directory will equal that and change directory will equal that. And same thing here. So that we have the same offsets within the arrays for the make and change directory commands. So I still have to remember to put the same ones as the indexes, but I can switch them around and it won't matter. So if I do that and switch them around here, I should still be able to make everything, although I had an issue there. What warning are you giving me? Locally defined but not used. Yeah, that's that's fine. I'm using them for the for the indexes, so that's okay. So I should still be able to call change directory. I should still be able to make a directory and then change into that. Just for example, we have nothing there. I can run the test. All right. That's all I wanted to do there. So if I add more commands, I can add them to here. Say we have a remove or remove file. I'll just say rm. I might change command names later, not strictly follow Unix or DOS or anything, but let's say we have remove and remove directory later on. I'll have a, I don't know what I did there, but that's all right. I'll have a remove and remove directory, but not all in caps. And we'll add similar things down here. I'll say I have file system. I might call this like delete file though. So maybe later I'll name this like delete, which would be the, the DOS way. For right now we'll go with this. I'll just have the more descriptive name for the function itself. And delete directory. So this should be all right. I'm, these functions don't exist right now, of course. I'll have stubs for them. So I fill them out. I'll do that, I guess, at the bottom of the file system implementation, which I'll move up so my head's not in the way or anything. 
and they need to return booleans, so that'll be all right. We'll have delete file, that'll take in. Well, I do want to change what these take in as well. I'm going to change them to take in a double star for in the argv. Bands will be, I'll say, similar to programs, and that they will be called with the full argument vector or argv. That way they'll function a little bit better, a little bit more flexibly. So we call, you know, argv, which again is just strings, so the typing's not great. And my typing's not great either. <laughs> we'll just do this for now and we'll copy that. I'll say delete a single file. I'll say delete a directory along with all nested files and directories within it. I'll do that. Right now these are just stubs. Okay. Should still be able to make things and we have issues, that's all right. So show commands, it says it's not being used. So until that's being used, I guess I'll, I'll not name it. So what are these things? Unused parameter argv, yes, I know I'm not using them. Useless storage specifier at 89. Oh, for the enum? Oh, because I'm using type def, yeah. Uh, just do that. Let me put a, a, a void on these so the compiler shuts up. <laughs> just so the compiler shuts up. About those warnings, initialization from incompatible pointer type. Yep, so these I do want the warnings to show because I changed the signature from char star to char double star. So change directory and make directory I'm going to change. And not just pass argv1 here at 308. So let me change that. Instead of passing argv1, I'll just pass argv itself. So we pass in the full argument vector to a command if I find a command within that array. Okay. But then again, I have to change the implementation where I have whatever the other ones are. So make directory. So this is part of the, the git status changes that it showed. I was trying to brainstorm how I would add multiple directories if I was given a path and I wanted to make everything in there. Let's say we added a flag like dash p, similar to, to Unix for parent directories or what have you. So I was like, how do I do that? Well, I need to pass in a full argument vector if I want to take in flags and things for commands in general. So that's why I just did what I just did. And we'll do argv instead here to make that change. So where am I using path down here? It needs to be sort of argv1 instead of zero. So I'll just do this. This will be argv1 because argv0. And this is pointless. I probably won't write it again, but argv0 is the, uh, the command itself. I'll say would be. Would be shell command itself, e.g. for this, it'd be make directory. But anyway, argv1 would be the path. That way path still works for all of this. And the other one was, I don't remember. What was the other thing I had before? Change directory, yes. So that would be fs change directory, which is given a path. And I'll set that up again here. Instead of path, we'd have the argument vector. I'm just naming it the same thing. I, I might need a, a better name for this, but I'm naming it consistently just so it's the same everywhere. I can work with things one, one thing at a time. All right. So that should result in no changes. Path undeclared at 564, of course. Instead of 465. If not path, yeah, because I need to add in that to begin with before I check it, don't I? All right. Okay. <laughs> it's going to say that should result in no changes. I should still be able to make directories. This test, well, that's not test, but that's all right. So we have tet there, and I should be able to change into there, and that still works. Okay. So now I can pass an array of arguments instead of just a singular argument. That's good.
such as a dash p flag. If I get to it, maybe I'll do that on this video. And instead of making a nested directory I call, I'll just do it all within a loop within this function. But right now I'm not going to make multiple. I want to do a, a remove command. Since I have make for directories, I want to make a remove for directories and files. And then maybe a move command and a rename as well. But that's getting ahead of myself. Save that. All right. So I just added a remove. Remove and remove directory here for these stubs. Delete file, delete directory. So let's see what all I have to do for those. Transmissions from my from my notes here that I remembered I wrote down. We had like a bunch of steps to, oh, you probably can't see that, but if you can't see that, I just wrote down a bunch of steps to implement remove commands and other things that I found. So I remembered I had a sort of bug, an additional bug, or a future bug within make disk when I'm writing the bitmap blocks for inode and data. So for data specifically, it's not too bad. It's just if I have a number of bits that I need to write here, so the number of files, for example, for data blocks, and it's a multiple of 32, so evenly divisible, bits mod 32 would be zero. And this code right here is going to add one extra bit. So it'll add an extra file if it's evenly divisible by 32, and I don't want to do that. So I just need to say, if we get the bit chunk here, I suppose, I don't need to do that. It would be num data blocks, I only want to do this if it's above zero, because if it's zero, we will have written 32 at a time. We don't need to write an extra bit. That's all. So I guess I had this right here, right? Uh, yeah, I had this right here. So if mod 32 is above zero, then I'll set the last partial chunk. Apparently this would have one extra bit. All right, special case for multiple of 32. And then for the inode bitmap, I'm not even setting more than 32 at a time. Like the max this can do is 32 bits. <laughs> so I saw that when I was writing down, uh, writing down my notes. And I was like, why did I overlook this? If I had tried it up to this point, if I had tried to add more than 32 files, it would not correctly work for the inodes at least. And that would be an issue. So I just need to add code similar to the data bitmap. Where let's say I have a chunk. And we need to set sort of 32 bits at a time. We can get the total blocks. We can just put that up here, actually. Instead of data blocks, this would be the number of inodes or the total files we're going to add. And then for the 32-bit cases, we can add those. I just need to write these bit chunk for one image pointer, so that'll be the same thing that I'm doing down here. I don't even need to add the sector, really. What was I doing with the sector? I'm just setting four bytes in there. Yeah, that's a waste. <laughs> I can just use a four, four byte variable, not a 512 or whatever byte variable. I guess I used bytes written as well. It'll just be a copy of that, really. That's fine. So we'd still add those inodes at that point. And this would be inodes, not data blocks. It would add those, number of bits, number of inodes. Special case for bits mod 32, that's fine, okay. Oh. Okay. I don't need to write, I'm already writing from the bit chunk, don't have to do that. Then we'll pad out to the end of the blocks, which would be Adding bytes, not from sector size, but from bytes written. Which is four bytes for every four byte chunk I'm writing. Add that out to the block size, okay. So by the time I write the bitmap, I don't really, I should probably add an fseq if I need to, but at the point in the code, we write the boot block, we write the super block, we're at the point of writing the inode bitmap blocks. Otherwise I should add, wherever I was at, I should add like an fseq to these actually go to the right spot but anyway i'm not using sector in this function anymore that's a little less space on the stack which is nice and it compiles which is nice and if it all works hey we're still good there so let's see if i can still make a directory 
to make user test and we'll change into there. All right, we can still do that. That's good. We ran the test. We can type read test. That's there. I want to be able to type the docs as well. Okay, and that still works. So we're still good. All right, I just wanted to fix those things because those were bad. Okay, so some other initial work that I can do before I go to writing a, a remove command before filling out that, that function is that while I have a function to set a bit, I believe, yeah. So I have a function to set a single bit in a disk block. I don't have a function to clear a bit or to clear multiple bits. And that would be useful when I'm removing a file to clear all of the data blocks. I would zero out, I would zero out all the blocks on disk for the file's data. And those blocks correspond to bits in the data bitmap. So it would be nice to have an abstraction I can use to clear those bits in the bitmap easier. So I can add a function for that as well. All right, so let's add a function for that. I'm just going to copy the set bit. This will be to clear, to clear a given bit in a chunk of data. I guess we can do a singular block or maybe a range, like a length of blocks. Or I can just give it the specific one. Oh, that's that's probably fine right now. I might change this to taking a length to be a little bit more flexible, a little bit more generic. But this instead of set bits, I'll make clear bit. We would read write. So we'd read the block. We do everything the same, except we'd clear it by anding with logical knots, one shifted left by that. So that'll put a one in the bit spot, and then it'll knot it and do a zero in the bit spot, and every other bit would be one, which means if we and with that value, only that bit would be cleared to zero. And then we'd write that back, so that'll be all right. But I also want to make a couple helper functions for clearing or setting a bit within the, within the data bitmap or the inode bitmap, because I think that would help abstraction a little bit, and I might use it more than one place later to, to abstract the code a little bit better, shorten some lines in a few areas. So let's say I have something to clear a bit, for example, in the inode bitmap, and we'll make one to clear in the data bitmap. Probably should make them bool and like propagate errors, but I'll just do voids, voids right now. So I'll say clear bit in inode bitmap, for lack of a better name, and I'll get a bit number. You went 32t bits. And we'll have one in the data bitmap as well. So given that, I can clear a bit in a disk block now. It can just be a wrapper around that, really. But it would be for the given inode. So I need the given inode block. And the bit number for an inode would be the ID for that inode. So that'll be all right. So the specific block for that would be the first inode block in the super block plus our bit number or our inode ID uh, divided by inodes per block, probably. I don't have a pattern for that, but it should be within, just because I haven't opened it, it should be within here. I thought I added that, yeah, so I added that. So this would give the specific bit within there, or specific block rather, and then I need the bit within that block if I keep the interface like this. That's block plus, I want to do it like this, just to ensure order of operations. So I would give a block offset from the first inode block, and that would give the inode block to clear a bit within, and then the bit within that block would be our bit modulo. In this case, modulo inodes per block. So I won't know if this works until later, but I'll just have that be a little wrapper function. That'll clear things up a little bit. The data bitmap as well, I should make one. This will be the first data block, first data bitmap block, rather. Oh yeah, these are bitmaps. These are bitmaps, not the inode block. Inode bitmap block. That should be, yeah, that's auto-completed. So I don't need to do inodes per block. Do I have bits per block? I do, okay. That's good. Slight confusion there, sorry about that. In the bitmaps, <laughs> I want to clear a bit in the bitmap block. That would still be a block offset by number of bits, though, instead of number of inodes. And we get the offset within that block 
by modulating by that value. Okay. The data bitmap block would probably be similar. I don't think it'd be... Wouldn't be inodes per block. I think this would be similar just from the data bitmap. And this would be a sort of zero offset disk block itself. So if a file is written at disk block 10 or whatever, then this would be bit 10 within the bitmap. So we'd offset from the start of the bitmap by whatever block that is. In this case, it'd be zero. And then bit modulo bits per block would be 10. So it'd actually be bit 11, one based indexing, but zero based would be 10 and that should be all right. Okay, I'll probably use these later. I just wanted a couple helper functions to remember to set those up. Because when I'm clearing out data for a remove file command, for example, it'd be a lot easier for a loop to be done over an extent over all the data blocks for the file within the extents for the file. And I could just call clear bit easier for the inode and the data bitmap, just pass it a number. So I don't have to remember to do this every time. Uh, and I don't have to remember to do this every time. So hopefully that's all right. It might be a little bit more disk IO reading and writing a sector at a time. So it's not really the, the best there. I don't, I don't aggregate a bunch of disk reads and writes and do them later like any modern OS would do. So this is inefficient and it'll thrash your disk a bit, but it's sort of simpler in abstraction right now. So, okay. Okay, so let's start writing the delete file command to set that up. Let me make sure it actually compiles first as well. And we don't have errors or warnings. Did this come from here? Probably came from here. Initialization of bool from incompatible pointer type on change directory. That's still from the other one. Or no, no, this is my last make here. Sometimes it's hard to read. All right, <laughs> this is where I did make. There's no warnings, okay. So what do I want to do for here? I guess I'll error or I'll get the path like I did before. The path that I want to make for this thing. And that would be, yeah, argv1 should be the path there. Let's say we'll error, error on special paths. So I want to do it similarly to something I had up here, I thought. Maybe I don't have it up here. <laughs> similarly to other things, I want to sort of error if I'm given special paths. So like root, I don't want to remove root and that would be bad, for example. I just want to error out if that's what it is. So path, let's say root, and we'll put two bytes to compare that so it would have the implicit null byte there for the end of this string literal. So if I, if that's a not, that means it's equal. Or other paths, we could say, I don't want to delete something like dot or dot dot. These won't work anyway, because they're going to be directories, but I just want to say we don't want to delete those. So I can just short circuit first, regardless. So if it's these, any of these, I'll return false. Okay, else we need to get the inode for that. So let's say I have file inode, or just inode is probably fine. Get inode from path, path. And then I can check and say if the type is not equal to file type file, then it's not a file. And I can't remove something that's not a file if I'm calling delete file. That would not be good. Okay, just checking my notes. I also want to get the parent inode because that will be lessened by one directory entry for this file. So a, a parent directory that contains this file, the file data for that directory has a bunch of entries, which say the ID of the file and the name of the file. So if I'm removing a file, I want to remove it from the directory it's in as well. And the file data for that would be removing the directory entry with the file name. So the parent inode will have to be updated as well, at least for its size and its data blocks to remove that entry. So I need to grab that as well, but I should have, yeah, parent inode from path. And I need to check if either of those are bad. So if inode ID is zero, or parents inode ID is zero, then they don't exist. So files, directories don't exist. Only delete a file, not directory. Okay, I can also check 
I think I have a reference count. If I remember right, so I know T. Okay, so yes, I have a reference count here. Let me put a thing there. Number of open, I'll say uses of this file. So if I open a file and I'm using it somewhere later on in multiple processes, for example, I'm going to increment the reference count for the inode for that file. By default, when I open a file, like from the open syscall in my system, it's going to make that reference count one, or it'll increase it if it's already opened. So when I go to delete a file, I don't want to delete it unless it's not being used anywhere, which might later at some point result in zombie files or something. But right now I want to get around that bug, we'll say, by only deleting it if it's not being used anywhere. So if the person calls, you know, close, for example, on all open uses, then we can delete it. Or maybe later have a journaling system where we want to delete it and we'll check every so often if it's still open, if we have like a delete thing in a queue. I don't know. <laughs> Brainstorm and spitball in here. But we'll say if the inode ref count, well, I guess I'll check if it's above zero. If it's above zero, we won't delete it. So is there a case where it would be zero? I guess it would be if it's not been opened yet. And that's a uint. So if I do negative, it'll wrap around. If I do negative one, or I subtract one from it, it'll wrap around for uint, and I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that, because it's a uint eight. Okay, so only if it's above zero, we'll do subtraction. We'll say reduce open uses of this file by one. I guess another potential bug would be if this thing is called in a loop or something, it would keep doing that. So that wouldn't be good. I'd have to have safeguards around that later, but that's more like a threading issue or something. So anyway. All right, then I'll check if the ref count is still above zero after we reduced it. Then I'll return, I guess, false. I'm not going to, I guess this wouldn't be an error. I could return true. We just, we're not going to delete it. Uh, I'll say file is still open somewhere else. Don't delete. Yeah, don't delete. But we did reduce the uses of it. Okay. So then I have actual code to write for it. Okay, so the logic, the logic for actually deleting a file will be something like, for an outline, before I do it so I don't forget things. We're going to delete all, or clear out, and we'll say, clear out file data by clearing all data blocks and all extents used for file in inode. So I'll just say clear can just be setting all bytes to zero on disk. We could also do something where we just clear out the inode data in the directory entry. So, and we clear out the bits, but we don't actually zero out the data on disk. That way it could be overwritten later and use less disk IO. The only issue with that is maybe from a security standpoint, for example, we don't want the file to be still on the disk somewhere that somebody could look at it. I'm not really worried about security right now. That's something way far in the future, but that would be something to keep in mind. If you want less disk IO, we could just not clear out the data, but we could clear out the position in the parent directory and we could clear the bits so that later they're overwritten if something uses that free bit in the bitmap. Uh, right now, just to be, say, exhaustive, we'll clear out the file data as well and all the disk blocks. So after that, I want to also, we'll see, clear out data bits and data bitmap or disk blocks. So clear inode and inode blocks. I also want to clear inode bit and inode bitmap. And then I want to clear directory entry for file in parents. Uh, I'll say parent directories, file blocks, and data blocks, whatever. And we'll update parent directories inode to reduce size by size of directory entry. And I'll say another potential to do, we'll say if this file 
reduces the parent's size. I'll say to a, what's the right way to word this? <laughs> to a multiple of the block size. I'll say then can clear out that disk block and data bitmap bits. That'll free up more data, lead to a little bit less fragmentation, maybe. If we have a directory that has a number of files equal to a number of directory entries, and the size of those equals a block on the disk. So by default, we're going to have dot and dot dot directory entries. That's 128 bytes. But if you have so many files, it equals, you know, whatever the size is for a block, which is 4,096, and that's like 16 or 64 directory entries or whatever at 64 bytes each. If you have more than a block and I delete a file, then I'm going to reduce the size by 64 bytes, which is the size of a directory entry in my system. If that reduction brings it to the next block size amount, that would mean it was previously taken up another block of data that now could be freed. And to free that block, I can clear it out. That's all I'm trying to say here. Other than that, I'm not sure what else is needed. I believe, I believe that's all I'd need to do. Okay, so let's set up some loops here for all the file bits. So let's say for uint 32 or size t or whatever. It's 32 bits, so it'll be 32 probably. Might have a couple nested loops, we'll find out. I need to go through all the extents in the inode and files inode. So I'll have one to go through that. Let's say I need to offset by the extent amount. Oh, we can do IJK and all that's that's fine. That's fine. I'll make it different if it looks really bad. So the number of extents is in the super block. That should be direct, direct extents per inode. We'll also have to go through the indirect ones, which I'm not doing anywhere because I haven't used anything that needs it yet. So that's all right. Guess I'll add that as a case. Also go through indirect extents, single and double. So for each of those extents, we'd have inode.extenti, and we'd have the first block and the lengthened blocks. So the first block is where it starts, the lengthened blocks is how many blocks in a row for a given piece of the file. So I want to clear those out by probably mem setting them on the disk. So I probably have another loop here, and if I do it a block at a time, then I can clear out the bits at the same time, make it a little bit easier. So let's say j will equal I know extent, uh, it'll, be, it'll be the first block to the lengthened blocks. So let's say it's I dot first block, and it'll be less than first plus length, or we'll just set it equal to this. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do it less than the lengthened blocks. Well, then it would be zero actually, so never mind, let's do. <laughs> because uh, we can just do first block plus j as part of calculations for that. So for the number of blocks within that extent, I'll have code to deal with those. So first block plus j would be that specific block, so I probably want to fseek to that on the disk, but I don't have fseek in my system. I'll have to do read-write sectors. And I kind of forgot the thing for that. I need to set up like c tags probably would be good. That's still in this other function. I need to get rid of this check file name. I don't think I'm using it anywhere. Remove this function. It's not used anymore. All right, anyway. So the size in sectors would be the size of a block. So I believe it would be sectors per block. I think that's one I have here. Yeah, sectors per block. The starting sector would be the first block, probably the first block plus J. And I have the address I want to read into, and I have the command to run. Size and sectors, the starting sector. Oh, size and sectors, what am I doing there? I forget how I'm doing this. That'd be a count of sectors, yeah, because it'd be one block, so it'd be sectors per block, okay. Then it starts at, yep, offset from the first block. 
So read that many sectors starting at this sector. It needs to be in terms of sectors. So I'll do this times, probably times sectors per block, which should be eight. So if I'm reading eight sectors from this multiplied by converting a block into sectors, which is what that does, then I need to give it an address to read into and then a command to run. Okay, well, command would be read with retry. I'll just do that. So what address would I be reading this into? Like up here when I do load file, I'm loading, yeah, the length in blocks times this, an address. Well, I passed in an address for that. So how do I clear all the blocks? I probably only need to do this if it's, well, if it's above zero. The length in blocks would be zero if there's no data in that extent. So j less than zero would be false and it would go on. So that's okay. So I need an address. That's interesting. How do I do that? <laughs> do I have a thing up here? I do have a thing up here, right? Yeah, I have temporary. Temporary block, and I'm using that elsewhere. So I'll just do that. I'll just do that. That'll work. So that's a singular block I read into there. Then I'm going to call memset, which I should have. But does that take in... The uint or the address? That takes in a pointer to the buffer, yeah. So I can pass temp block directly. The byte I'll write in zero. The length is gonna be probably size of temp block. If I can do that, should be able to do that because that'll be a known size of block size, which is 4096, that should work. So that'll clear out the file data to clear out the bit as well. I have that clear bit function now, clear bit in data bitmap, and the bit would be whatever block I'm on, which would be the first block plus J. If we're at this block 25, and we're at the first one in the extent and it's 25, then the bit I can pass would be 25. If it's three blocks long, we would clear bits 25, 6, and 7, as well as clearing those blocks on the disk by doing this mem set. So I can just put that there, because the disk block directly corresponds with the bit in the bitmap, which is nice. And then that'll be for all, at least the direct extents here. Double indirect I'm not doing, that's okay. All data blocks and all extents used for file. Uh, yeah. Okay, then I need to clear the inode in the inode blocks, and that would correspond to the inode ID. So I'll do this again. Except I would read write. Uh, I guess we would clear the block, yeah. We'd have to write that back. Oh, I have to write it back, yeah. <laughs> I'll do the same thing in reverse. It would be write with retry writing the same block, the same sector on the disk, from this block, this address, writing this address to this disk sector, effectively, for eight sectors, so that whole block, after we cleared that whole block, so it would just write zeros back to that position. So really, I probably could just do this and not have to read it, because I'm going to clear it anyway. It's a full block of data. I can really just do this. Temp block can be zero. And then for all the blocks for that file on disk, we'll just write that zero into there. That would be a little bit better, actually. There's no sense in reading it. I'm going to clear it out. By clearing it out, I can just overwrite the position anyway. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Hopefully. Hopefully that'll work. So clearing the inode and the inode blocks. The inode would be offset from the super block, probably, yes. So let's do super block first inode block plus the inode ID in terms of inodes per block. inodes per block, and that would give a block offset from the first one. And that needs to be in terms of sectors. This one I probably would read though, yeah, because I'm only clearing one inode, not the full block. 
So I could do this in terms of sectors, actually. And this would just be one sector. And the sector would be this one. Probably this would be in terms of block. Well, we could read a block at a time. That's fine. That'd probably be better for modern SSDs anyway, reading 4K at a time. So I'll read eight sectors. I'll read a full block of sectors from this block in terms of sectors into temp block, and then I'll offset within there. by the inode amount, which would be temp block, the start of that, plus bytes, and the byte value would be inode ID modulo, inodes per block. And I need that in terms of bytes. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> My brain died. Uh, how do I offset from this? Did I not do this before? I probably did. Let's not reinvent the wheel if I've already done this before. Mm, what am I doing for update on disk? Let's just copy what I have for this. I think that would probably be better. <laughs> First inode block in terms of sectors, plus the inode in terms of sectors would get the sector that it's in. That's true. Okay, and then let's do this. Don't reinvent the wheel. Actually, I could just call that, couldn't I? I might just be, a, yeah, I could just call this code. I'm overthinking things, sorry about this. I forgot what I've done before. <laughs> I could just call update the inode on disk and clear out an empty inode. Like that would be fine, most likely. Well, never mind. no, no, I would have to. Copy that code back. Never mind. I want it to all be zeros, so I do have to kind of modify it. Anyway, that's the sector it's at. I'll write with retry after. Okay. Okay, inode ID modified. Sector plus that would give the inode size of data. Okay, and then I'm setting that. Let's just set that to zero. Temp inode is a pointer, so that's all right. So let's set that to zero, size of inode, which I got up here, and it's not a pointer, it's a struct, okay. So an inode amount of data, I'm setting that to zero at the position within the sector corresponding to that inode on disk, and then I need to update that sector on the disk, so I write it back here. I'm taking that inode from the disk, I'm clearing it out, and then I'm writing it back. And I'm not sure I need the inode later. That's why I'm keeping it around locally. That's why I didn't just use this. I don't know if I still need it to clear out the parent inode. I think I do, because I need the ID, or the name, so that's why I'm keeping it. But anyway, it's kind of useless at this point. So clear the bit and the bitmap blocks, I can do that. Assuming my clear function works, I can just clear bit and inode bitmap. The bit would be inode ID. See, I still needed it. If I get a temp inode, then I can clear the temp inode, which is in the temp sector. Yeah, okay. And then the, we have to clear from the parent as well. So the parent directory's data blocks, we have to find that data. I don't think I have a function for that. I can get the inode for a name in a directory, but I don't have anything to get the position sort of within the disk blocks or anything. I don't think. That's okay. It hasn't come up before, so that's all right. Uh, actually, I just thought... <laughs> I just thought... I just made these clear functions. I could also make set functions, and that would be good. That would be good as well. Let me do that. Because I have set bit in disk block. So we can do set bit in inode and data bit maps. And then we can have clear bits in inode and data bit maps. And that will just call set bit instead of clear bit. 
cassette bit. Just ors it with that, so that'll be all right. And that is the bit in the unknown bitmap. Okay. Because I could use that elsewhere, I think, in the future, or even currently. So that would go along with clear. Okay, but that was a tangent. Sorry about that. So clearing the data, entering the parent's data blocks. We have to search through the extents, which is kind of what this double loop is doing here. Except I'm going to be searching. So I'm going to get the next block of data. And I need to search through that block, and then I'll clear it. So search. I'll just say search this block for directory entry corresponding to inode for file. Okay, and if we found it, you know, clear directory entry data. Let's have a directory entry. I can make it a pointer. That'll equal, you know, directory entry t pointer. For temp block, we'll say that's already an address. We'll just cast that to a different size of data. Put it, put it in here, and we'll search through that. So while how would we how would we do that? While well, the ID doesn't equal the inode ID, I suppose we can. Plus plus, but that's not entirely correct because we could go easily beyond the end of the block and have a seg fault or protection fault. So I don't want to do that. We need a count of the number in there. Do I have anything like this? Yes. Okay. Directory entries per block. That's good. Let me have an overall count. I'm just going to do this and I'll say, well, we haven't found the ID and um, count is above zero. We'll go to the next entry in there and have minus minus. So directory entry ID could be zero if there's holes within the file block, like we've deleted some files before and in the middle there's some zeros in there. That's okay. I just want to go through every 64 byte chunk effectively until the end of the block. And if we find the ID, cool. If we don't find it, I want to stop when we're when we're done. And if we do find it and we're not at the end, then it should equal the ID. So if the ID equals inode ID, we found found directory entry for file, clear it. And we can memset that because that is a pointer size of directory entry T. So I want to clear that data. And then I can probably leave, leave both for loops really. If I want to leave both for loops, I can do, this isn't great, but I can do this. <laughs> so that'll be all right. I guess if I don't find it, I could end early. And that would be all right. Say found file or removed file or something. I'll just say found file. And if we did this, I'll say found file equals true. Then we'll leave. And we'll say if not found file, then return false. For some reason, if that happens, if we did find it, then we're good. We cleared out the data from the directory entry and the blocks for the parent inode. I'm not using the parent inode. Sorry about that. That's why I have to reread things. Clear the parent directory's blocks. And I got the, I got the parent inode up here. Okay, but it'll have the same number of extents as a regular file. So the parent inode, its blocks. I need to use here, and that's okay. That would read into temp block. That's fine. And we check throughout there. Okay, so that should be okay. Just want to make sure I'm using the parent's extents here. All right, so the parent's inode size we can reduce. So parent inode 
dot size and bytes will subtract by size of directory entry t, which is should be 64, but maybe I change that later. And we also have a size in sectors, which would equal bytes to sectors of that number. Okay, so the size and sectors of that number. And then that should be it, really. Although I can do this check here. I can say if parent inode size and bytes. Um, let me update this on disk, actually. And that takes in an inode itself. All right, so I'd update that given the parent inode. Just make sure it's updated first in case I have other data that moves stuff around in memory. Update the size. So after updating the size, I can check this. Do things one, one thing at a time. If the bytes modulo block size equals zero, after reducing by this, by this amount, then given that our files use extents, I don't think this would matter if a file is deleted in the middle, although it might. I guess there could be holes. There could be a bunch of files and then some deleted files and then valid files after that for the, for the directory entries for a given directory. And then we could have a multiple of the block size, but there could be files both before and after a block boundary. So I probably need another check here. Check if full block is empty. But that would be wherever the block is that I last loaded that had the file in it. So I guess that would be temp block here. Because we haven't messed with it past this point. We left after we cleared it out. Within that block, yeah. So, okay, I can do that. So do I have... Because I don't remember anything like mem compare. I have mem copy. Do I mem compare? I don't. Or whatever it's called. Mem mem. <laughs> I did learn about no manual entry for mem compare. I don't remember. Oh, it's CMP, isn't it? Uh, okay, so you can't open man pages within Vim, I learned. So I want to try to use that more. Although I get I get issues from like not being able to edit things because I have like an auto command to set files to UTF-8 or whatever and it gets errors. But anyway, you can also do... Uh, let me close this buffer. You can also do a... If you have the word, like you can search for the word forwards or backwards, but you can do shift K, so uppercase K will also open the manual page, which is pretty nice. If I look that up, instead of, you know, opening, going to a terminal and doing this, I can do this within Vim and it's highlighted and stuff, so that's cool. Anyway, and you get it in a buffer, so you can just copy data to and from, it's, it's great. So I should add in like a mem compare. Let me do that. I could do an int, I guess. I'm doing uint8. I guess I'll do int32 for mine. Let me put it up so my head's not in the way. What does this do? Compares the first n bytes. Of course, you can do all this in Emacs and stuff too. I just thought it was pretty, pretty slick. Here's the first n bytes as an unsigned character of the memory areas S1 and S2. So instead of this, I'm just going to say UN8 of S1 and S2, assuming, I guess, assuming it's that large, which is probably fine. I'm doing void pointers. So I know it's not as, it's bug prone because it's not as valid if I do it like this, but anyway. Size TN also will probably set in. Set to UN32. I don't think I have size T yet, but that's fine. It's a compiler built in, most likely. So it compares. What does it return? Turns integer less than, equal, or greater than zero. Put this here. Just to go along more, more with what I have, like up here. So returns integer less than equal to 
or greater than zero. If the first n bytes of S1 is found, respectively, I don't like that it keeps doing that. Respectively, to be less than match, be greater than the first n bytes of S2. For non zero value, the sign is turned by sign of difference. First pair of bytes. Okay. And the, for if n is zero, the return value is zero. Okay. Okay, else I need, I'll probably do what string compare looks like. I thought I had string compare. I do have string compare, all right. Which is my bad implementation. Which I should probably add a thing for that. Or no, that doesn't have a length associated. Yeah, this does. Okay. String in compare probably does. String in compare has a length, which is just while length is zero and then okay. I still have that case for zero. Alright, so I should copy string in compare then and not do the other one. Sorry, I keep going back and forth. It's probably very annoying. <laughs> Uh, much like my brain, my, my typing and programming goes in a stream of consciousness style, which can be a bit wacky and tangential for every two seconds for something else, but okay. The length, I should probably name it length because it makes more sense than n, in my opinion. And s1 and s2. So while they equal, then we'll just keep doing that. At zero return zero, else we'll go through. Okay, and then we'll return S1 minus S2. I mean, that seems reasonable. I don't need to do a mem compare, I get. Oh, yeah, because I'm checking if it's empty. All right, so S1 minus S2. That was for strings, which is just character data. This is going to be for any type of data, and then it'll return that value as an integer. Okay. I guess I probably, these are void pointers, I probably should cast those. Which is why they made pointer diff types, which I don't, I don't think I'm using. So I'm a bad programmer. These could be aliased as well, they probably could be overlapping. Anyway, so this would be the data at S1, wouldn't it? Yeah, return the data at S1. The first byte is found to be less than match or greater, yes, okay. Or I probably should be doing int since I'm returning an integer. I don't know. This is probably not compliant and not a correct version of memcompare, but anyway. <laughs> to check if it's empty, which would be probably comparing it to itself or to a full thing of zeros. So what would be a good way of doing that? Probably another block on the stack, which is not great. So that'd be 4k. Or I can do this without doing a mem compare, but I'll just keep that there for the future. I can do this very easily and not go through that tangent. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, we're not in another loop for i, right? No, I can use i. It's not being shadowed here. Why don't we do the basic mem compare against two, two bytes here? Which would just be checking if temp block, if the data at temp block, probably offset by i, is a u and 8, so that's fine. Check if it's 0. So if temp block i, I guess, is not equal 0, then it's not null. Then the whole block is not empty. The full block would be empty if all these come back. So this is bad. We could compare more than one byte at a time, of course. By doing like uint 32 t temp block offset by i, and this would be less than block size divided by four. So check four bytes at a time instead of one byte at a time. That'd be a slight optimization. So it's not equal to zero, then we're not going to clear it out. I'm just going to do break or something. If they're all equal to zero. We need to check here. So I can have another bool. Bad way of doing this, but it should work. 
So I'll say is clear false. Let's say true. Is clear equal false and we'll break. Okay. If is clear. Yeah, if it's empty, I can clear the data bitmap bit. I guess I don't need to clear the block if it's empty because it's going to be empty. After setting this to zero. I guess I need to write that back too, don't I? I'll say clear it on disk. I need to do, this probably needs to be read. Not paying attention. Oh well. <laughs> uh, read the sector in, update the sector directory entry size data for that entry. And then write that sector back. Well, I'll write the whole block back rather. Okay. Anyway, for that block, if it's completely clear, if we deleted the directory entry amount of data, set it to zeros, which this set it to zero, and the full block is clear, then I can clear that disk block in the data bitmap to free it up. That's what I'm talking about. All right, we can clear that bit in data bitmap because that bit is now clear. And what bit would that be? It'd be the bit corresponding to this. I probably have to save that. I'm going to say data block. Data block equals zero. So if it's above zero, that's fine. So this would be this block here. So let's say that's within this loop. That would be this block. First block plus J. Okay. So then we'd clear that here because that would be a number offset from zero, and that corresponds to the bits. For the data bitmap, and that bit would be offset from zero in the bitmap. Yep, that should be all right. Okay. All right. After that, we can return because we are good. So that should delete a file within a directory and and, and update that directory. But just like make directory, which I have up here somewhere, I should probably update the directory if it's been updated. Otherwise, we won't get a visual update. If we delete something from the root directory, it won't visually update unless I do something like this. So I'll just update that and we'll clear the bit if we need to. I guess I'll do that last. Okay. So will this work? Probably not. <laughs> For a multitude of reasons, the least of which being some error that I overlooked that causes a bunch of other errors. You're referencing void pointer. That's true. Not even using this, and it's complaining at me, of course. Yep, yeah, UNA. I mean, I even wrote this. Each interpreted as. Uh, a U and date T. There we go. Oh, it's a U and eight T, not not this. So U and eight. Well, if I'm doing that. I should do it if they're both U and eight. Yeah, my brain is not working. That's that's not great. <laughs> if the bytes are different, then we'd return. If the first bytes are less than match or greater than the first n bytes, yeah. Duh. Okay. Does U and eight T pointer work? No, I have to do that on the other side, don't I? Yeah, I have to dereference that. I'm not thinking at all. Is that what I did for string and compare? I turned the data at one and two, but the data, they're U and eights, so that's fine. I could just make them U and eights, but void maybe gets around that a little bit anyway. Yeah, I have to do this. While the data is there, then we'd increment. I could offset these by length as well. Would probably do the same thing. But we'll just do that. If the bytes there are equal, we'll increment there and check the next bytes. Okay, a little bit less errors, hopefully, probably. Looks like not. Cast from pointer to end of different size. Well, I know that. Work with me here, man. Have to put another another thing in the jig. 
which is probably why for string and compare I just made them UNAs because it's a lot easier than dealing with that. Okay. Path is undeclared. Inode from path, path 745. Okay. I set path right here. Because I need that. <laughs> this was counting as this this open bracket, because I didn't have an open bracket. This was just ending the function. Yeah, that would not be great. That would not be great. Okay, open it in here. I just don't get highlighting. FS delete file expected right for in before or. Before or. Because I can't do that. Oh, I just put the word or. I'm not programming an RPG because it's not my work. I need the actual version of that. Of that. Okay. Ref count is undeclared because I need inode.ref count. All right, there we go. Let's just make sure I don't have issues here with this make. All right. Sorry about that. I try. Sometimes it doesn't work. I should not be able to delete system or user. I should get an error. I guess I could print the error to the screen, right? So I do like remove sys. It just says command failed. Okay, well command failed is fine. It doesn't tell me why, but that's fine. All right, let's say I go into user. We have docs. Let's say I go into docs. So I should print, you know, get error messages here, right? I have test2, which I can delete. I just want to see it says testing. So if I remove test2.text, it is gone. So it used to be this folder was 192 for the dot. Now it's 128 because I just removed that and it updated it. Dot dot is still 192. So now we do not have test2.txt. Could not open. So it looks like that worked. Uh, could not seek into zero for seek test, but it made seek test. That's interesting. There's nothing in that file. And it works if I do it again. So maybe that's a, okay, do I have a Heisen bug for seeking? I probably do. I should look at that later off screen. But anyway, I just wanted to make these here so that I can go up and I'll just go here. Is that in my, that was in the docs folder. I just want to make sure stuff still works, right? So if I do read test, it's there. So I should be able to remove from here that file. I also want to add in like, you know, shell history so I, I can press up arrow or whatever, control P, so I don't have to, you know, type everything out again. That file doesn't exist. User docs is 320. It looks like deleting works, so that's good. So I could either cut the video here, or I could go on to do remove directory, but since I got remove file working, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. I know I'm not checking single double direct. This is going to be like an hour anyway. My voice is dying if you can't hear it. So <laughs> uh, I'm testing out, you know, EQ and different um, audio filter settings in OBS for this as well, because I discovered that the ones I previously had set got unselected after some kernel update or whatever. So now I'm actually using the audio filters on the mic that I had set up before the last video. They weren't active. So <laughs> if I sound different, hopefully better. That's why. I'll try to reduce clicks and things still in post, but anyway. Removing works, so I could add in, I'll just add in some like error cases here, and I'll just say like, I'll just say like, you know, here cannot delete S and this would be path. So for example, if I, if I try to remove root, it'll say cannot delete root as an error. So that'll, that'll be all right. I guess I should add in like a slash in first. And a slash R as well. I'm still remembering how I set this up to begin with. I don't have a conversion from carriage return just to, you know, I don't have a conversion from slash in to slash R and in like Unix because I wanted to be explicit with things. Cannot delete slash command failed. I wonder if I even need the last one. What does that look like?
Okay. Okay, so that'll work. That just says command fail. Okay, so I'm just gonna add in stuff like that for error, error conditions here, and I'm going to leave the video there. Hopefully this was okay. Not too bad. I am going to do remove directory as the next one, which I think I can just call this, this function for all the files in a directory that are found. And probably do similar code down here. Well, calling the file, delete file will work. I would just delete all the files within a directory. And if I found a directory, we'd go into there, delete all those files. And then I'd have a little bit extra code to delete the directory itself. So I'll probably do that on the next one. And it'll be nested, maybe recursive. We'll see if it works out better that way. And then I'll probably make the rename and move commands, which I don't think will be too bad. It'll just be creating a file at a new path and deleting the file at the old path. I could probably do that right now, actually. Because I don't think that'll take very long. So I already had a rename. But I'm going to delete that, probably. <laughs> Because I had a rename, an old rename file command. I'm going to delete that. Yeah. Because I'm going to do things the new way. Just say rename here. Because that was another motivation. This was another motivation for doing the delete file command was so I could do rename and move. And move would be using two different paths, potentially the same path. And rename would be using the same path, but just renaming the the file name itself. So rename file would be what that is. And I'll just copy this actually. So rename a file in a given path, or I'll just say rename a file, that's fine. So we'll just have the path to the file. And if not path, we'll return false. And I don't want to do rename for special things. I could make this an overall thing. I should add that here actually as well. I should error on special paths. Probably for all of these, but that's all right. I feel like re I feel like the re delete directory will take up more time than me just doing this. So that's why I'm doing this right now to end the video. Because <laughs> my brain was like, oh, I can do this. And now I want to do it while my train of thought is still active. So anyway, this might be closer to an hour and a half than an hour, but that's all right. As long as it's not like three hours again. I don't have it in me to do another three hour video right now. Okay, so how do we rename? We would... Basically, we don't even have to delete anything. We just have to look through the file for the parent directory. So I can get the, I, I don't even have to really get the inode from path. I just hopefully only have to deal with the parent inode. And if I'm given that, if let's say parent inode ID equals zero, then we haven't found it. That would not be good. I know I should put in error text. Do not get parent directory inode for uh, for path. But if we got that, we would have to look through it all, which is similar to this. I guess. So I could probably maybe abstract that code as well. But anyway, we'll just put it here. The found file, is that what I call it? Found file equals true, yes, we'll do false. Okay, so I'm looking through all the parent inodes blocks. I'm not gonna update, well, I will update it actually. <laughs> looking through the blocks, we'll go to the directory entry and the count. If the ID equals 
Not even the ID, we're looking for the name, probably. We could look for the ID as well, actually. That might be a little bit better than string comparing on the name, at least less byte comparisons. We only have to compare one number and not every byte in, in the name. Okay, so if we get the inode, then we can check the inode ID. If it equals the inode ID, instead of mem setting, I would string copy into the name, and that would be whatever our input name is. So we're given argv, we probably need a name. So let's say the new name. So this would be something like rename file a.txt to file b dot text right so this will be argv0 this will be argv1 this will be argv2 argv1 is going to be the path and the name well let's say folder a file a the name would be argv2 okay so the name would be argv2 And we can start actually writing stuff like usage, basically, if not path or not new name. Rename path to file. Say file name, new name. File name dot extension. I'll have new name dot extension. Okay, so I'll do it like this. I guess maybe square brackets means optional. I want to make it mean required. So let's say my legend would be angle brackets is required, and that'll be okay. Okay, so if we're given a new name here, I would just name it that new name instead of mem setting it to zero. On directory entry for file, rename it. So I name it new name. And copy that into name. The ID would be the same, and then we'd rewrite that on disk. We have the data block. Probably found file. I can say renamed. Renamed file instead. If it didn't rename file, it would return false. Okay. And then that should be okay. If I do directory, it'll reread all the directory stuff, right? Which is in print directory. Because that gets an inode, and then it goes through all the inodes, and that'll be on disk, and the disk is being updated right here with the new name, so that should be okay. Error could not not find file and disk blocks. Yeah. Just an S and disk blocks. To rename it. I guess I'll say that. That's reasonably understandable. I press the bracket, there we go, the brace, all right. So I figured that would be less time than going through and deleting a directory. Did you mean set block, undeclared data block? Yeah, because I don't really need that. I'm not using that anywhere in this function. I renamed it and I did that, okay. All right, so we did that. I really should just do it out here because sometimes I get errors. Now that I'm making a bunch of output, I don't see the errors. <laughs> That's why I have to go back out and do that. Okay. So let's so say we have test two. Let's say I rename test2.txt. Oh, I didn't do it. It says usage error, it failed. Rename without anything, usage, it failed. So let's rename test2.txt into uh, example. Oh, I don't have underscore? 
I thought I added an underscore. Maybe I didn't. Anyway, example rename dot text. Oh, example rename dot text. So if I try to do test two, it doesn't exist. If I do example rename dot text, hey, we got a rename command. Can I rename a folder? So let's make directory test directory. And let's rename test directory to folder A. Folder A is a directory. Test directory doesn't exist. Folder A exists. All right, cool. So I think rename works. I should probably add tests for that to the test cases in the OS, but I think that's good to go. So my issue was what underscore. So that would be in my keyboard driver. I keep finding things to add before I end the video. Sorry. <laughs> I need sleep myself. I'm going to go to bed after this, but uh, that is in the pick and that is in the keyboard. IRQ. Yeah, the IRQ one for the keyboard. I don't like the almond style white space. So if you see me keep doing this, it's because it takes up one less line of code <laughs> so I can fit more on screen for these videos. I don't really like doing the, the different stylistic thing for C like that. Anyway. Okay, I, I did this during testing for other things, but I guess I didn't put it in this video. It was probably part of the video that was audio corrupted, so I reverted those changes. But anyway, these are shifted keys, and this is, I could have a switch case instead of doing this, of course. But if it's a shifted key and it's A to Z, I'm making it capital. If it's 0 to 9, I'm doing the 0 to 9 shift keys for num row shifts, which are up here. Um, but otherwise, I don't have a special case for the shifted keys, which I should just make really another map. Effectively, I should make this look better as an array, and I should make a different array or a map for the shifted versions, and I can just do a, an O of 1 thing instead of doing all these comparisons, right? So that would be better. But anyway, if we have a, a thing here, I just want to make an underscore, a minus sign. We'll just do an underscore, no right since last change. Okay. That's all I wanted to do there, because I really like underscores for some certain things. So let's make a directory, test directory. Hey, I can do underscore now. We can go into there. I probably don't want to rename this directory while I'm in this directory. I suppose I could. I don't want to rename dot, so never mind, I can't, so that's all right. Um, okay, so let's run test. That makes these files here, so I can rename read test.txt just to example. And we have example. Oh, it doesn't end the, the thing early. Oh, that's a bug. All right, let me fix that. So I just string copy it in there. It should string copy the null as well. Maybe it doesn't. doesn't isn't string copy supposed to do that? I mean, mine is, is bad, right? Oh, I just set it equal. While there is a source, I set it equal. Ah. I probably should include a null on that, right? So that was the the, bu the bunch of errors I said because I have like auto commands and stuff for any generic file and the man isn't a file I can affect. That's why I get those errors in Vim, but... Anyway, does this copy the null byte? Uh, into a string at the buffer. It doesn't say that. It gives me examples. Kind of. Oh, it does. It does set the last one to zero. So it probably should set the last thing to zero then. Let me put that as a to-do, so I'll research that further. Source i, i++. plus plus. If I can find the right keys with my pinky, there we go. I'll leave that for later. Right now, I can do, do I have end copy? Let me ask a question after I immediately close the, the buffer here, the window. Yeah, I do. I can also just mem set first and just not deal with this. The size of name, name would be 60. I do have the size of name, I believe. I think it's 60 characters for the name. 
So I'll just do that. Or you could just mem set the whole thing and set the ID again to not have to think about the size of that. Directory entry T. This is a bad way of doing things. That's okay. All right, rename it. Use same ID. Yeah, use same ID. So we did get the inode there. Okay. That should be all right. So we'll go into user docs. I have nothing except those run test. So now I have all of these. So I should be able to rename read test into ex, which should just have ex. All right, there we go. There we go. Okay, that's all I wanted to do. <laughs> I got a rename function, which is cool. I got a delete file function. I will probably work on delete directory and a move function, which will be like rename, except it'll move to a different path inside of a different folder. So I'll have to delete the file from the first path, and then I'll have to add the file to the second path. So that might, that'll be probably a little bit more code, but anyway, I can do that on the next video. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of this. So I'll try to have it about an hour and a half after editing, we'll see. And I'm gonna go to bed. So thank you for watching, I appreciate it. Appreciate it greatly. And I'm gonna date this video, but <laughs> this is now whatever the new year is. So hope you had a good new year or the rest of your year is, is better than last regardless. And again, appreciate y'all, thanks. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, drink more agua, it's good for you.